Welcome to the Academy. Today we will talk about maintenance and configuration of the GSM GBRS module, which is located on the Perfector control panel. This communicator has two slots for nano SIM cards. This solution ensures continuity of communication and notification. In case of problems with network coverage of the first card operator, the control panel automatically switches to the second one. Important note, the two SIM cards may not be used simultaneously. While communication takes place via the first card, the second one is inactive, so we can say that the second one is treated as a spare one. Today we will use a PC with Windows operating system, a complete set including a Perfector 32 WRL control panel, and a PRF LCD keypad, a USB RS converter to connect the computer to the control panel, as well as the Perfector Soft software which is available for download on our website. Additionally, today we will use a SIM card and a top-up coupon. Also, we will need a smartphone on which we will show you SMS notifications. The control panel has already been set and connected to the computer. You can now learn how to do it by watching episode 37 in which we explain how to set up a wired system based on the Perfector control panel. Now we move on to the Perfector Soft software. We select the hardware tab and then GSM phone. This is important information. Before you insert your SIM cards into the SIM card holder, you must enter the PIN numbers in the program, otherwise the cards may get blocked. In our example, we will use only one SIM card. So now we choose to use card number one and enter its PIN. Then we enter the SMS center number of our operator. Nowadays, some operators save that number in the SIM card memory. However, if we are not sure, it is best to fill in that field manually. We can also see the settings for GPRS transmission on the screen, which may be used for monitoring, remote programming, and updating firmware on the control panel. For operating the system via the mobile application, we will talk about them in our next episode. Now we will enter the SMS message, which will be used to control the sending of USSD codes. These codes may be used to check the SIM card parameters, for example, rates or change settings. We type in, for example, start. Note, when setting any commands, you should keep in mind that the control panel differentiates capital letters. Moreover, the SMS message with a USSD code should be created according to a particular scheme. So, for example, command equals USSD code equals etc. Now we unfold the prepaid support list. These options relate exclusively to the situation where the control panel is to cooperate with a prepaid card. If we decide to use a standard subscription card, we can skip the configuration of these settings. In this episode, we will use a prepaid card, so we start by entering the appropriate codes and changing the settings. You have to remember that USSD codes can differ depending on the operator. In the first field, we enter a sequence of characters used for checking the account status. In our case, the code is star 101 hash. This will allow us to check the available means on the given SIM card from the keypad level. In the following field, we enter the code relevant for topping up the account. The dollar symbol used in the code is placed exactly where you should enter the digits from the top-up coupon. That is how we will be able to top up the SIM card account from the keypad using coupon codes or scratch cards. Afterwards, we will set the minimum means amount, for example, 5. If this amount is exceeded, the control panel will send us a relevant warning. We will also set the time which every day the control panel automatically checks the account status. Finally, we enter the SMS which will allow us to check the account remotely using the phone. For example, how much? We will send the data to the control panel which completes the GSM phone settings configuration. Now we will move on to the functions tab and choose notifications. A chart where you can enter 8 phone numbers is displayed. Each time please specify the manner in which each number should be notified and where the order of verification should be available for this number. 
Please remember that in order to be able to listen to what is going on in the facility, the control panel has to be connected to a microphone, for example, MIC1 model. You can also set the duration of the audio connection with the control panel in the software from 1 to 255 seconds. This time concerns both monitoring after the receipt of an audio notification and after having reached the perfected control panel by phone. If you set this option to zero, the listening option will be inactive. The last available option concerns the transfer of SMS messages which do not contain control commands. This means that the control panel will send, for example, information received from the GSM network operator to the specified number. Now we will set the first phone number and send the data to the control panel. Under the phone number chart, you can see the list of audio and SMS notification settings. First, we will move on to audio messages. We have 16 messages to choose from. We can also use WAV files recorded from the computer. Or enter the message and use the speech synthesizer installed additionally on the computer. Alarm partition 1. In order to make it easier to differentiate between them, we can give them shorter names. After setting the messages, send them to the control panel. This is done differently than in case of other system parameters. You have to use the button visible next to the list. Next, we can move on to select the events of which the system should notify us by audio messages. At each event, for example, an alarm in the first partition, we mark which phone should be informed and we specify the message number. Finally, we turn the audio notification services on and send the data to the control panel. In case of an alarm, the set control panel will call the specified number and play the relevant message. We can also use the second type of notification, that is, SMS messages. We unfold the SMS notifications list. Firstly, we choose the partitions in the chart. The content of messages is downloaded from the list of events. After the data is sent to the control panel, we will check how SMS notification works. For this purpose, we will arm partition 1 and trigger an alarm there. As you can see, the notification has worked as set. Finally, we will show you how to set control over the Perfecta system's functions via SMS messages, so we can move on to the relevant tab in the program. There are 16 control commands available. In the function column, we can set one or 254 actions which will be performed after the receipt of an SMS command. We right-click the chosen field, the same as in the case of setting key fobs, and a list of available functions will unfold. Each of them has an assigned number. Important note, when entering control commands, please remember that the control panels differentiate capital letters. You can see that both commands have the same content but different application. Now we will set the command which will arm both partitions in our system. We will send the data to the control panel and see how the SMS control is performed in practice. The control message had been received and the control panel armed both partitions. Everything was working according to the assumptions. In order to control and review information about the Perfecta system remotely, you can also use the mobile application Perfecta Control. We will tell you how to set the control panel in order to cooperate with that application and how to use the application itself in the next episode. That's all for today. We hope you'll join us in the next episode. See you.